Just as we're coming down from a solar storm, a new Earth-directed solar storm is launched. And solar flux tanks. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather switches gears a bit this week. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, you can see there are still a lot of active regions on the Earth-facing disk. However, none of them are big flare players. Unlike last week, we aren't getting the big radio blackouts that we've kind of used to getting. But we did have from region 3040, we had a big solar storm that's Earth-directed be launched. In fact, it looks beautiful in the chronographs. You can see that big partial halo. However, this happened at a time when we actually lost our imagery due to a power outage up near the source where we get our uh, SDO imagery. So that's still kind of like ramping back up. We're still trying to recover some of those images. So we have to take a look at that when we look at the sun's far side. Meanwhile, solar flux has been dying down a bit. And so we're not getting the radio propagation that we're used to on Earth's day side. However, coming down from that solar storm that we've had over the past couple days, this does mean that uh, uh, Electron flux is ramping up, and therefore we're having some charging issues in GEO. So satellite operators, for those with dealing with space traffic, you're going to have to deal with those uh, ramping charging issues over the next few days. Switching to our M-Flare threat meter, as you can see, as we take a look at our X-ray flux, there's been a downward trend over this past week. And this is because all the big flare players that we had from about a week ago, they've all now rotated to the sun's far side. We do still have some active regions on the Earth-facing disk, but they're a lot smaller and they're definitely not big flare players. Therefore, the X-ray flux is tanking, and by proxy, the solar flux is tanking as well. We are now back into the high 90s. We've dropped down below triple digits, so radio propagation on Earth's day side is suffering just a little bit. And this may be a little bit of an issue as well, especially when that big solar storm ends up hitting Earth. It could cause a bit more of an issue on the day side since we have solar flux kind of dropping a little bit. Sadly, these conditions will likely last over the next week, they may rise just a little bit, but we'll be hovering in the high 90s um, maybe for a few more days before things look better because we don't have a lot of active regions on the sun's far side that look like are going to be big players yet. But hold on because those other flare players shall return. It just may take a couple weeks. Switching to our solar storm conditions, as you can see back on the 25th and 26th, we got hit by that fast solar wind from that kind of extended coronal hole that was rotating in through the Earth strike zone. And it bumped us up to storm levels for a little while. And because of the kind of strange nature of that coronal hole and the shape of it, it actually kept us at active conditions over the next couple days before things began to settle down a bit. Now this of course happened over field day and may have affected radio propagation just a little bit. So if you guys wondered why certain bands didn't seem to be working, well, that's, that's the reason. Meanwhile, we've kind of settled down now we're back into unsettled conditions to almost quiet conditions and this is going to last for the next day or so but get ready because we do have that earth directed solar storm that should be hitting us right around the first and because the earth has already been a bit rattled it won't take that much to bump us back up to active conditions possibly even storm levels so aurora photographers if you didn't get a chance to catch many shots during this recent solar storm you are going to get another chance now switching back to that Earth-directed solar storm, this is our prediction model, Enlil. This is NASA's version of the model, and you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. And you can see that solar storm being launched. Now this storm is a big storm, but it is moving quite slowly. And man, that makes it difficult to predict both in the arrival time and also the intensity. So as this thing as it hits Earth, it looks like, according to NASA, we should be getting a hit right about noon on the 1st. And it is a big storm, so it could last quite a while. So Aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you could definitely get some decent shows. Now, Aurora photographers at mid-latitudes, well, it's really going to have to depend upon how fast this storm actually is and how strong it actually is, because it could be pretty weak and therefore not give us all that much. But the fact that it's big and it could 
could last a long time might build up to Aurora. So we're going to have to really kind of take this one once it hits us. So keep your batteries charged, even for those of you at mid-latitudes, because you know what? You might indeed get a show. And now switching to our far-sided sun, this is Stereo A, and it's looking at the sun just a little bit from the side. Now you can take a look at Stereo. We actually have data this time from about the 25th on, and on the 26th and into the 27th, you can start seeing around region 30, 40, and a little bit to the north, kind of some slow changes. Well, those slow changes are actually that solar storm that's Earth-directed. That was it launching. We're hoping to get some better imagery soon, but this is the best we've got right now. Models show that this storm should hit Earth right about midday on the 1st. So you geo-satellite operators, as you're dealing with that surface charging and internal charging, don't worry about it because as soon as a solar storm hits, all that flux will be flushed and you should be able to be in the clear. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the new moon phase on our way to a first quarter. And by the 4th, the moon will only be about 25% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, now's a perfect chance to catch those dim objects in the sky like, I don't know, maybe some aurora from an Earth-directed solar storm. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are still coming down from that fast solar wind that bumped us up to storm levels just a few days ago, and we have that new Earth-directed solar storm that's expected to hit us in and around the first. So at high latitudes, NOAA's expecting active conditions, and we have up to about a 50% chance of a major storm. It's going to be a little bit hard to tell. I know that's a bit of a spread, but it's really hard to know when we have these big storms that are moving very slowly how hard they're going to impact us. If we do get to major storm conditions at high latitudes, we definitely could be storming over the next couple days in through possibly the second or the third before things begin to settle down. Now, mid latitudes, we're also only expecting active conditions, but we do have about a 25% chance of a minor storm and even a skosh of a chance of a major storm. Likely not going to get there, but what does that, that does mean is that we could again see some aurora even down at mid latitudes over, you know, sporadically over the, the first couple days in July. And that's kind of a nice little treat if you happen to be in the United States. You know, it's July 4th coming up, so enjoy the extra fireworks and nature's fireworks, especially with that new moon, because then the skies should be nice and quiet and dark for you. So that should last in through the uh, first couple days in July, and then things will begin to taper off from there. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is pretty much back in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We do have a few active regions on the Earth-facing disk, but only one of them, region 3040, has a skosh of a chance for uh, big flares. NOAA is giving us about a 5% chance of M-class flares over the next couple days, and likely these conditions will continue until region 3040 rotates to the sun's far side. So this is good news for GPS users. We have very little risk for radio blackouts on Earth's day side. And, and on top of that, you're going to love the fact that the solar flux has dipped down into the, the high 90s. We are no longer in triple digits. And GPS users, you love it when the solar flux drops down. It makes GPS reception much more stable. However, radio uh, operators, you're not loving it so much. You've probably noticed radio propagation is dipping down just a bit on Earth's day side. Sadly, these conditions will continue easily over this next week and possibly into the week following until bigger regions rotate back into Earth view and can boost that solar flux back up into the triple digits. The one nice thing is that we don't have any risk right now for any radiation storms. So you frequent flyers, everything is in the green for you, and it, we're back in the normal range. So the space weather has switched gears a bit this week. We don't have any big flare players on the Earth-facing disk, really, but we do have an Earth-directed solar storm. So aurora photographers at high latitudes expect to show starting around the first and mid-latitude aurora photographers, well, you know, stay vigilant because it, this storm, it's kind of hard to guess whether or not this storm is going to give us aurora down to mid-latitudes, but it does have a chance. So make sure you keep your batteries charged.
Now, you amateur radio operators and emergency responders, yeah, I know you're not liking it. The solar flux is no longer in the triple digits. You're probably noticing that radio propagation isn't quite as good on the day side of Earth, but just kind of hang in there. We're going to have to deal and ride through this solar storm, and maybe on the Earth's night side, you can get some auroral propagation that will kind of help out a little bit. But, you know, on the day side, it's just not going to be as top-notch as you're used to. But as new regions rotate back into view over the next week, maybe two weeks or so, things will start looking up. So, you know, just hang in there. And now GPS users, well, you should be rejoicing a bit. GPS reception should definitely be much better than it's been, both on the day side and on the night side. Now, sadly, though, we do have that solar storm coming. So starting around the 1st, if you're on Earth's night side, just be very careful, especially near dawn and near dusk or anywhere near Aurora, because your GPS reception might be a bit off. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.